don't have a lot of time, and okay. I need to hear about the story. So you're in Seattle. Mm. You check into a hotel that's known for being haunted. Yes. Everyone uh, says it's haunted. Everyone says it's haunted, but I was there for work. So this is the hotel where they put us up. So I didn't have a choice. And it was a haunted hotel, notoriously haunted. What's the name of it? Uh, <laughs> it's the Sorrento Hotel. Okay. okay. But now I hope they don't, they won't get mad. They no, know it's they haunted. Know. They yeah, know they know. Haunted. They're proud of it. Okay. And um, there had been some, you know, people had been hearing things, seeing things, other actors staying in the hotel. And uh, one night I was going to bed. And I was on the eighth floor, and there was like a ballroom, conference room above me. And I was hearing all of this, like clanking around. They were having a party upstairs. So there was lots of footsteps and tables moving and music and all this stuff. So finally, about midnight, I said, I need to get to bed. I have an early call time. So I called the front desk. I said, excuse me, how long is this party going to go on? Well, you know the answer. There was Ma no party. There was no Nobody party. Nobody was up there. No party. No party. I mean, that's, that's scary. That's good, especially it's a ballroom. It's and a ball, right. OK. So um, then. And then I did go to bed. And um, I woke up like two hours later, and someone was whistling next to me, like, like, like in bed next, like to you? in bed next to me. But there wasn't a person. What and kind it was, of what kind of whistle? Well, see, it wasn't scary. It wasn't like haunting. It was just like a tune you would whistle on the way to work. It was just how? <laughs> yeah, like it was a sweet. But tune. they don't have lips. How are they whistling? I don't. Well, see, but that now, now I can't. I don't. I can't explain the supernatural. I, I have to tell you something, and I'm not, not trying to brag. I wasn't scared because I was I couldn't see it. So if there had been a man next to me whistling, I would have been frightened. But this is just a, a, a very um, benign whistler that I couldn't see next to me. And I felt like, well, what is he going to do, kill me? He's a ghost. Well, they, people have been killed by ghosts before. Well, <laughs> I mean, I've seen stories on television about that. But I just don't know how you're not scared when someone is next to you in bed whistling. I don't, no I, matter how happy the tune is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because again, I felt like there, there, isn't an, there wasn't anything I could do about it. If he had been whispering like yeah. threats to me, yeah. then I, I, would have, I would have run to the party upstairs and yeah. like thrown myself into right. the dance floor. But, and how many more nights did you stay there? Oh my gosh, like two more weeks. Oh, and the, the, I, did other things happen every night, or was it, that it? Um, it? Things happen here and there, but you grew used to it. So it's kind of like, well, that's just the situation. Although I will say, I went down to the front desk once, and I said, oh, yeah, I didn't sleep very well last night. And um, I said, are there ghosts here, like making light of it? And, and, the, and the clerk made a joke about how it, I really was sleepless in Seattle. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I laughed, but I was sort of just politely laughing because it, what is so funny about like ghost haunting me yeah. throughout my stay there? Right. It was a polite laugh. All right, well, I just think it's fascinating. Yeah. I, that's, it's a really crazy story that you weren't scared of whistling.